Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Dear students, we are स्टूडेंट्स वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट अप्लीकेशन ऑफ पोस्ट कलोनियल स्टडीज पोस्ट कलोनियलिज्म द हिस्टोरिकल पीरियड ऑफ स्टेट ऑफ अफेयर रिप्रेजेंटिंग द आफ्टर मैथ ऑफ वेस्टर्न कलोनियलिज्म द टर्म कैन ऑल्सो बी यूज टू डिस्क्राइब द कंक्रेंट प्रोजेक्ट टू रिक्लेम एंड रीथिंक द हिस्ट्री एंड एजेंसी ऑफ पीपल सब ऑर्डिनेटेड अंडर वेरियस फॉर्म्स ऑफ इम्पीरियलिज्म पोस्ट क्रोनियल लिटरेचर इज द लिटरेचर बाय पीपल फ्राम फॉर्मली कोलोनाइज कंट्री इट एड्रेस द रोल ऑफ लिटरेचर इन पपिचुएटिंग एंड चैलेंजिंग वट पोस्ट क्रोनियल क्रिटिक एडवर्ट साइड रेफर्स टू द कल्चरल इम्पीरियलिज्म सो पोस्ट क्रोनियल लिटरेचर क्रैक्टरिस्टिक्स अप्रोप्रिएशन ऑफ क्लोनियल लैंग्वेजेस पोस्ट क्रोनियल राइटर्स हैव दिस thing they like to do meta narrative colonizers like to tell a certain story colonialism colonial discourse rewriting history decolonization struggles nationhood and nationalism valorization of cultural identity counter discourse challenging stereotypes we are going to discuss as an application of post colonial theories so we have already studied that what does this word post colonial means and we have uh, talked about in detail the field of post colonial study has been gaining prominence since the 1970s since some word now due to rise in the western academy from the publication of edward said's influenced critique of western constructions of the orient in 1978 book orientalist the growing currency with the academy of term post colonial sometimes hyphenated was consolidated by the appearance of 1969 the empire rights back theory and the practice of the post colonial literature by bill ashcroft and uh, so the uh, trifton since then the use of the this term commonwealth and third world so all these things we people have discussed in previous lecture too that word of this world because so it's a sort of a recap you can remember it that lot of important uh, writers critics who worked on it they produced a lot of things on post colonial studies that word does this word mean <coughs> so major issues that post colonialism address despite the reservations and debates research and post colonial study has continued to grow because post colonial critique allows for a wide ranging investigation into power relations in various contexts the formation of empire the impact of colonization and the post colonial history economy science and culture the culture uh, production of colonized societies feminisms and post colonialism agency for marginalized people and the state of post colony in contemporary economic and cultural context capitalism and the market environmental concerns and the relationship between aesthetics and politics and literature are some of the more important topics in the field that we people study in colonialism how people are subjugated how their economy is impacted feminism so a lot of things are there we people discuss a lot of theories post colonialism colonial theories actually Uh, that that does not mean only uh, one theory there can be set of theory but after dida's deconstruction we can see a train of theories there that all talking and criticizing colonialism it's basically reaction to colonialism post colonialism does not mean that comes after it uh, it it can be literally true but so far as semantically if we can talk about it and from critical uh, thinking uh, from a uh, criticism point of view if we talk about it it is something different one that it's a reaction to colonialism and uh, liberation from the impacts of colonial thinking whatever we people have it comes in the umbrella term of post colonial um, studies or theories so a lot of the questions are there how how did the experience of colonization affect those who were colonized Uh, while also influencing the colonizers how, how were colonial powers able to gain control over a large portion of the northwestern world uh, what factors have been left by colonial education science and technology in uh, post colonial societies how do these factors affect the decisions about development and uh, modernization 
in post colonies what were the forms of um, resistance against colonial control how did colonial education and <coughs> language influence the culture and identity of the colony uh, how, how did western science technology and medicine change existing knowledge system what are the emergent forms of post colonial identity after departure of the colonizers to what extent has decolonization or uh, uh, reconstruction um, free from colonial influence uh, been possible or western the formulation of post colonialism over emphasizing hybridity at the expense of material reality should decolonization protect proceed through an aggressive return to the pre colonial uh, past related topic uh, essentialism how do gender race and class function in colonial and post colonial discourses a new forms of imperialism replacing colonization and how so these are a lot of questions and this whole slide is regarding question that need to be answered one in current world so main goals of post colonial studies the ultimate goal of post colonial is accounting for and combating the residual effects of colonialism on cultures it's not simply concerned with salvaging past worlds but learning how the world can move beyond this period to gather towards a place of mutual respect baba especially known for its discussion of cultural hybridity other major concepts and themes in post colonial theory are power subjectivity identity ethnicity race and nation so we have to see application of post colonial studies as possible working definition for post colonialism is that it involves a study of engagement with experience of colonialism and its past and present effects both at the local level of ex colonial societies and at the level of more general global development thought to be the after effects of the empire this changes the socio cultural socio economic and demographic factors meta narrative colonizers like to tell a certain story and this a uh, story europeans were treated to rule over other lesser people from the irish to the igbo uh, europeans were the designated master the rulers of the earth therefore they were justified in ruling over others but no that was their destiny and our anyway they weren't really in it for their own more profit they were enlightening the dark people so you see they were civilizing them so post colonial writers have a big problem with this story after all from the perspective colonization wasn't about civilization or enlightenment it was about brutal economic exploitation and what really bothers them is the fact that this story was told and repeated by the colonizers as thought it was a fact europeans wanted everyone including their colonized subjects to accept it as true <clears throat> so post colonial writers started pointing out that actually there is more than one side to the story in fact there are often loads of different sides to the same story as a story that we take and to be true or factual is often just one point a view among many so in their own work post colonial writers tend to play around in the jargon meta uh, narrative they like to draw attention to the way the stories or narratives are constructed and especially how they are always told from a certain point of view or angle So for many cultures around the world colonialism was a massively traumatic thing imagine all the sudden this stranger shows up in your town and your village takes all your stuff forces you to learn his language only to tell you how lame you are and then uh, proceeds to run things uh, uh, any way he wants or oh, and just add a, a little thing in the exploitation cake he does all uh all this while destroying your environment your culture and your livelihood in fact the effects of colonialism were so deep that even after indispensable many countries and cultures continue to suffer from its effects often the colonizers language displaced indigenous languages many uh, people abandoned indigenous religions after being converted to christianity by missionaries even the post colonial nations that <coughs> emerged after independence were 
modeled alone western style european nations with the same type of administration and bureaucratic setup so given what a huge deal colonialism was is it any wonder what writers from formerly colonized countries became obsessed with understanding it representing it and challenging it and given that consequences of colonialism extended well beyond the actual period of the colonizations a lot of people say that these consequences continue even to this day so it uh, uh, is it any wonder that the writers are still dealing with the legacy of colonialism this course now is a collection of narrative statements and opinions dealing with a certain topic this course can be about anything there uh, is even just in bible uh, this course if you think about all these millions of articles gossip columns and twitter need feeds obsessing or over when he last blinked his left eye colonial discourse as you might guess is the collection of narratives statements opinion that deals with colonized people told from the perspective of european colonizers of course the discourse isn't very kind to colonize <coughs> people it usually portrays them as savages as uncivilized as lazy and as savage colonizers themselves are usually presented as civilized and benevolent and generous so given that colonial discourse was so important in justifying the whole enterprise of colonialism it became very important theme for post colonial writers one of the goals of post colonial writer is to attack this colonial discourse and show it up for what is land of gold so uh, european colonizers often thought of the people that they colonized didn't have a history before the europeans enlightened them the colonizers thought that the colonized people had no culture but made no ha, ha, had made no contribution to human progress and were ignorant from what perspective colonialism was a wonderful thing for them weren't they just so lucky to be taken out of their thing, thing for them uh, ignorance and darkness and civilized by benevolent colonizers post colonial writers don't like this version of history it's a version that cast colonizers as heroes as uh, and rescued who saved everyone from ignorance and darkness so post colonial writers set about writing history from their own perspective and show how colonialism was actually a pretty violent terrible thing more importantly these writers also show how history is a matter of perspective and there are always many perspective there is no one true history decolonization struggles uh, freedom fighters in africa asia south of america and caribbean fought colonialism people like mahatma gandhi in india patricia loma in uh, zaire and cabral and cape verde and uh, so i mean in haiti tackled the colonial power through politics uh, without them decolonization couldn't have happened but decolonization is just a political thing it's also cultural and mental thinking there were the writers uh, coming post colonial writers aren't just interested in decolonizing the political subject they are interested in decolonizing the mind to use a phrase made famous by the post colonial uh, kenyan writer nagugi wathyonje uh, decolonizing the mind means different things and different writers but there is also pain mental and cultural liberation from the structure of philosophies and colonies post colonial writers are really interested in nationhood and colonialism a lot of these writers are very patriotic the writers books on behalf of their nations their writer is often nationalist because post colonial writers like to highlight and valorize their nations culture political and social identity now things didn't turn out so well from many countries after they gained independence whether it was crap politicians or general lack of democracy the problems were huge and post colonial writers got mad post colonial literature isn't just about criticizing the colonial powers it's about criticizing the native corruption that betrayed the dreams of newly liberated nations valorization of uh, cultural identity you know how big a justification for colonial uh, colonialism was basically that the culture of colonized people were just inferior to those of europeans well post colonial writers challenge this idea and they 
do this by valorizing their own indigenous culture you are you have got religion they say to the colonizers so do we you have got culture so do we we have got our own literature and our own art from sculptor to painting uh, to body painting dudes so in post colonial literature you also see this valorization of cultural identity reflected in the narrative style of literary work for example a lot of african post colonial literature resembles spoken language that's because prior to colonialism much african lit- literature was uh, oral literature people told story they sang poetry to each other so no one uh, way that african writer valorized their indigenous heritage by turning back to these oral narratives for forms that predated colonization for inspiration counter discovery there is uh, one characteristic that we could use to lump together all these different literatures emerging from all over the world it is that they form part of counter discourse to colonialism remember how how we define colonial discourse and as a collection of narrative statements and opinions generated by colonizers about the colonized well counter discourse is you guessed it the collection of narrative statements opinion that post colonial writers generate in opposition to the colonial discourse in the uh, counter discourse of post colonial writers we'll find beliefs such as the white people are the best africans are lazy and asians are stupid contradicted again and again that's because such ideas and statements from the foundation of colonial discourse and that was made up to justify the economic exploitation of the colonized people challenging stereotypes in order to justify colonialism colonizers had to make themselves believe that the people they are colonizing were somehow lesser than they were otherwise how could they got off and enslave and kill and steal from so many people one way they convinced themselves of their superiority was by developing all kinds of stereotypes about different colonized groups they were dangerous they were untrustworthy they were lazy a big mission of post colonial writer is to challenge these stereotypes and show that they were based on nothing but the biases of the colonizers socio cultural factors phenomena post colonial is a critical theory which uh, aims to study the process of colonization from perspective to the colonized societies post colonial colonialism comes into a play into socio situation which concerns the nation's culture after the liberation from imperial power post colonial is a style of thinking as the colonized and the colonizers as well as methodological tools for analysis of post colonial discourse its myths and history language and discourse self and others omike baba is a leader of the direction of post colonial studies and author of numerous neologisms hybridity mimicry hybridity is a term used by him ke baba to describe and explaining the ontological status of cultural objects generated in the course of convergence of european and the colonial traditions in the age of globalizations omike baba focuses on translations as a means of cultural transfer in the post colonial era of multiculturalism in his view our translator thus speaks several languages is much uh, multicultural however omike baba did not in conclude the translation of the hybridity but regards the process of interlingual and intercultural transfer as a way of hybrid semantic codes and actualizing their semantic verbal preposition uh, in different uh, socio cultural situation of the largest country the linguistically the text of the homike baba is monograph the location of culture is a typical example of humanitarian scientific function style where the primary the cognitive internationality realized at the uh, lexical and grammatical levels so colonial languages were the languages of politics which meant that a lack of fluency was a natural the barrier preventing many colonizers uh, from gaining politics and power language played a critical role in the form of conclu- uh, colonialism uh, making a cultural claim to conceptual lands not just a political one socio economic factors in immense economic inequality we observe the world today didn't happen overnight so lot of socio economic factors had been in the major reason is colonialism colonialism has changed so we can see european colonialism retracing over uh, 500 years or back the verge of the colonialism changed everything was changed so linguistic factors also there language is also uh, central uh, question post colonial studies 
during colonization colonizers usually imposed on every uh, encourage the, the dominance of the native language to the people so during colonization colonize usually imposed their language onto people and they were supposed to follow it so colonial languages were the language of politics which were dominant which were spoken and people who knew them they were given jobs and power so major other some of the other uh, best known names in post colonial literature are those of Chinua H.B. Homi Bhava, Edward Said, and Buchi Mbixita, Franz Fanon, Jamaica, Kinsir, Sinman Rushdi, Wal Soyinka, and Gay Chakravati Spivik. So literature, Chinua uh, H.B. Anna, and two, so these are the writers who worked on post colonial literature, and, and these are the people who worked in film and these are the people who worked in theory you can study so conclusion post colonial studies study the hybridity socio-cultural factor socio-economic factor linguistic factor appropriation of colonial languages matter narrative colonialism colonial discourse re writing history decolonization struggles nationhood nationalism valorization of cultural identity counter discourse challenging stereotypes of the societies thank you